filled with history. A man from Grand Rapids saves wood from old barns, then uses it to create something new. Fox 17's Tim Doty has his story. Yeah, I think it is very important to, uh, to consider saving, conserving parts of history, and, and by uh, preserving these old barns and making um, conservation boxes for living creatures, birds, and uh, other species, uh, I think that it, it's uh, making a nice comment about the whole idea of conservation, something collectible, something that will uh, uh, preserve uh, the present, mm -hmm. give birth to a new future for these creatures. Kind of a circle of life, if you look at it from another perspective. It was housing uh, birds, probably, when it was a tree. It was. Then it was housing animals, and now it's housing birds again. It is, it is, and it's probably going to go for another hundred years of the folks who... Uh, pick these up, uh, give them a little coat of varnish once in a while. They should last for a good long time. It's usually the north side of these old barns that's in the best shape. And uh, it's a long way up to climb to get this stuff down. You're a tall fellow. It wouldn't be so much of a stretch for you. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fun to collect it, yes. You had one that uh, Gerald Ford uh, was part of, correct? That's yes. on your website, that yes, story? Yes, that's correct. Patterson Barn. And uh, I do have a considerable amount of that barn still preserved. Um, we, uh, I am probably going to be at that pile for quite a long time. We've got almost a whole barn saved there. Wow. Does the price of the bird, does it depend which barn it comes from? Like, since that has a bit of presidential history, does it make the wood more special? Or? Well, it's special. All this stuff's special. But, uh, yes, you're right. It is special because uh, Gerald Ford, of course, being a, uh, a very uh, foresightful man, um, uh, asked me to make a box for him and for his daughter specifically. But, no, the price does not change on these things. Actually, uh, the one we made for him, that replica, is uh, one of the most reasonably priced pieces because it lacks a lot of the, uh, the jazz on it. Each birdhouse takes about five hours to build. They're available on his website. We have a link on our Facebook pages and at fox17online.com. Provide shelter to birds now, but the wood comes from barns that once housed livestock over 100 years ago. Tim Doty, live in Grand Rapids with the man who's preserving history in a very unique way. We're talking birdhouses, huh? It is really great, Christian. And as you said, they used to house animals and feed and things like that. They were barns over 100 years ago. Now they're making birdhouses out of them. John's the guy who's doing it. First off, we got to say you couldn't have had a better location for this to make Victorian birdhouses. You're in a Victorian house, and this basement really sets the tone, doesn't it? Yeah, I got the bug a long time trying to fix this place up. You know, I had to do a lot of research on Victorian patterns and so forth to repair our, uh, our carpenter gothic facade. And, uh, you know, you know how it goes when you're, uh, when you're married, uh, your wife gets ideas, and then she started ordering up birdhouses. That matched the actual exactly. house. Exactly. Then I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> I've been hip deep in sawdust down here now for about 15 years. Too. And you're doing this as a hobby, uh, but it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort for oh, you. Yes. Each one takes about five hours, you say, to Yes, make? yes. And that, I think that's realistic. And it doesn't include the amount of time it takes to uh, harvest the materials, uh, uh, cut the materials, prepare it. Uh, denail it. A lot of it's full of uh, uh, Victorian hardware, you know, big uh, square nails. Uh -huh. and pretty sizable chunks. You don't want to run them through the saw. You might get a surprise, you know. So you're finding people who are tearing down or the city's making them tear down a barn that's at least 100 years old and you say, I want that wood, right? Some of them you have to buy. Other times you get lucky and somebody says you can have it, correct? Yes, that's right. I used to run uh, ads in the newspaper when this... Uh, this project proved popular uh, to try and find more quality material and I did buy in fact uh, the better part of uh, three barns which we've been using but uh, recently a, uh, um, a professor from uh, Cooley uh, donated her barn because it was on the verge of collapse and uh, um, I salvaged most of the usable exterior lumber from that and uh, barn cats has taken the rest of it down <laughs> and he's going to use it on another project so it's found a new home and nothing is being wasted from that big old barn. I'm going to reach behind you here. This is a, one of the ones that uh, you made for the late President Ford, correct? This yes, was I, the style that he wanted, and it was out of a barn that he had worked at when he was uh, running for Congress. Yes, believe, that's right? right. 1948, the Patterson Barn. Everybody in Grand Rapids seems to know that landmark right behind the Home Depot. Uh -huh. uh, 28th, 28th yeah. right on the way to the airport. And it used to be a very significant red barn that would stand there. Unfortunately, um, it was built from 
two structures joined together in about uh, 1895, I think, and the joinery between those two barns, finally uh, the insects chewed it up and it blew down the west side. Um, I saw it in the field and went and knocked on the door. Uh, Mel Patterson, strangely Patterson <laughs> Avenue, uh, came to the door. He's a very nice fellow, and uh, we talked it over. He said, "Well, sure, I could salvage material," but he did uh, did make clear he wanted 30 cents a foot for it. He also helped me take it apart. He's a hard-working fellow, that guy. Well, you are obviously a hard-working guy, too. There's a lot of effort. If you want to get one of these, you want to see all the different styles, you can go to John's website. We have a link on our website as well as on our Facebook pages if you want to check it out. When we come back later on, Christian, we're going to show you some of the steps that go into making this and talk about when you got a piece of wood like this, exactly what can you get out of a piece of 100-year-old wood. Yeah, it's green, but it's full of nostalgia, too. That's the neat part about it. Exactly. They've stood for 100 years, and John, you say if they put a little varnish on them, they're going to last oh, yeah. close to that again. Marine varnish. That, that's a durable finish. That'll last. <laughs> take care of it. It'll take care of you and your birds, Christian. All right. We'll check back with you in a little bit. Thanks a lot. Roadhouse today tells us he's got fire and some old wood. you got lots of stuff going on. We do have a lot of stuff going on, Michelle, and it is all repurposed wood outside of, uh, as John tells us, John's back here, outside of the molding on the very top, That's everything right. that you use in the birdhouses that you can see up above us is this old repurposed wood. So I would say, and I asked you this earlier, you're more of a conservationist in your mind than somebody who makes birdhouses. Well, I mean, the birdhouses are important, and they're, they're certainly science boxes. They have that application. They're well-researched, although they have an architectural look. That's just to get people excited. The birds, they still think it's a hollow tree. Repurposed wood, that's correct. What can we get out of a piece of this big? Can you look at a, at a slab of wood and say, okay, that's three or four roofs because you got some roofs over here? Or how do you decide what goes into what part of the birdhouse? Yeah, exactly. The widths. Um, I try and get uh, lumber that's at least 10 inches wide so I... I can make complete roofs out of a piece like this. And out of this piece, yes, I could make uh, maybe three roofs. Um, that knot hole I had to repair on that particular piece of wood. Everything uh, I use is frequently uh, retailored <laughs> just for so it'll last because I, I don't want to pass on something substandard. Uh, that also might make uh, four or five fronts because it's so not free and clear. And that's a sign of really nice uh, first generation lumber. It's not free. It's It'll last for a long time. Things would be a lot easier if you did it on the cheap, but you're going for the authenticity because you used to work in uh, models and architecture, correct? Yes, that's right. Yes, architectural scale models. I'm very interested in the uh, replication of things, accuracy. Uh, you can tell the difference. You know, if you're just fudging you know, it, it looks a little bit lopsided. I think you'll see, like, this uh, San Luis Rey uh, replica we did for the mission in San Diego, Oceanside. Uh, um, yeah, it has the uh, the right look, you know. Well, let's see this. We, we talked about we were going to do a little branding here. Okay. You had this built uh, just recently, last year or so, and this is how you get the details on the front, whether it's the front of the San Luis Rey or some of the, sure. uh, the things that make it look so good. That's correct. It's uh, actually using 19th century ironwork hardware, if you like, and uh, the tradition of branding things is an old art that uh, I had to learn how to do, and if you watch this, it's fairly accurate. Here we go. Hey, we are lighting something on fire. Mother's Day is coming up, Michelle, yes. so if people want to get mom something special, get her a nice birdhouse. This isn't just any birdhouse. This is a birdhouse with a story, and on the bottom of all these birdhouses, it has the barn where it was made. John puts that on there so you can see where it came from. We have a link to his website on fox17online.com as well as on our Facebook pages, and Mom will be much more impressed when she finds out the story that is behind her birdhouse. Don't you agree? Oh, it's great. Just, just beautiful, beautiful work. So if you're thinking about a Mom's Day present for me, great. I'll take it. Or get Michelle a bat house, too. You'd like that just as much as a birdhouse. Well, I would like the bats to stay, the bugs to stay away from my garden, so one never knows. The big one over there, is, as we send it back to you, Michelle, that is a bat house. Yeah, so you'll be seeing it. that probably in your garden very soon. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Tim.